Brookline. And as promised today on Brookline Interactive Group, we've got Chi Chi Wu, who wears many hats, but I guess I'll introduce her as a member of the steering committee and co-founder of the Brookline Asian American Family Network, BAFIN. Chi Chi, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Tommy. It's a delight to be here. As, as everyone knows, or maybe most people know, we, we film on Zoom, uh, and that's sort of a COVID uh, protocol, uh, and it's awfully convenient sometimes. One of the consequences is sometimes it's a little laggy. I get the sense tonight we might be a little laggy, so I hope you'll bear with us uh, if it can be a little slow here and there, but you know, we're all doing the best that we can. Uh, Chi Chi, the first question I generally ask folks, um, and, and there's a lot of room to answer any way you want, is like, you know, what have you been doing from birth until now? Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> So first of all, um, thank you again for having me. And I'm hoping the internet gods um, give us stable Wi-Fi tonight. So um, let's see, what from birth till now. Well, um, I'm going to fast forward the early years and say um, uh, I am a lawyer by training. So we'll start somewhere um, in the 1990s when I graduated from law school, uh, spent a few years in DC and moved to Brookline in 1993. Um, worked at a few different places, Greater Boston Legal Services, um, the Attorney General's office before landing at the National Consumer Law Center, where I've been a staff attorney for 20 years. Um, I had a kid who is a graduate of Pierce School and Brookline High School, so a big fan of the public schools of Brookline. Um, and I, as a result of being a big fan of the public schools of Brookline and also realizing that Brookline has a fairly significant Asian American population, um, especially in the schools. We are now one in five students in the Brookline public school systems, uh, myself, and some other folks decided to get together and form a parent group called the Brookline Asian American Family Network. Um, started in about 2009, got really active in 2011. So I guess we're officially 10, 12 years old. And uh, that's my side gig. And uh, tell us a little bit about some of the things that Baffin does both maybe inside the schools and also more community facing? So we're probably best known for our community or public facing events. Our big one is the Lunar New Year celebration. Uh, every February, we have this wonderful celebration in the high school, in the atrium, in the MLK room, and there's, there's food, lots of food. Uh, one of the things about Baffin is we do a lot of things involving food. Um, it's a thing, most people like it, you know. Uh, so we have food, we have performances, arts and crafts. It's a great event for the kids. Um, last year, we had it virtually, of course, because of COVID. Um, or, but or actually this past year we had it, uh, February, 2021, we had it virtually because of COVID. Um, but the years past have been in person and we're hoping to do it in person again next year. Um, the other big event we have is May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And we have an event every May to celebrate that. As part of that, um, we also give out awards for our essay contest. So every year for the past six, seven years, we've held an essay contest for high school students in Brookline. The theme is what it means to be Asian American. And we get lots of submissions and we judge them. We have award winners and the essays are really incredible. Um, the young people who write them, they, they're just really heartfelt, beautiful works. And um, the last one was virtual, the, the award ceremony. So if you have a chance, it's somewhere on the big website, you can actually see the essay winners. Um, recite their essays and it, it's really it was really just touching to hear them because they reflected on what's been a tough year for the Asian American community 
in Brookline and nationally because of um, anti-Asian racism uh, stoked by bl blame for to blame on China for the COVID-19 pandemic and of course our former president stoking a lot of that resentment and anger. Um, a lot of folks probably heard about the shootings in Atlanta, for example, um, and that's what our community dealt with. So, the, you know, so getting back to, to what we do, um, we, we have this essay contest and uh, um, we have an event. Um, you know, we do a lot of advocacy. So, so that's the public facing activity. And then, you know, we do a lot of activity a uh, lot of advocacy with the schools, with the you know superintendent, the principals. Um, this year has been especially active because because of the anti-Asian racism that I mentioned earlier. We really wanted to do something to try to head that off or lessen or prevent some of that once the students went from remote to going back in the building. And so some of my fellow steering committee members worked on a video curriculum to um, address anti-Asian racism. Um, there was a version rolled out in the high school. Um, it's being retooled right now um, because there were some hiccups, um, but we're also developing a version for the middle schools. So that's one of the things we've been doing as well. And then, you know, we, we advocate for more teachers of color and Asian American teachers, because, you know, certainly the, uh, the number of Asian American teachers and staff isn't proportional to the number of students. And we'd like to see more Asian American teachers and, you know, more Asian American studies curriculum so that um, students know about the history of our community and what we've gone through in this country. So, uh, I've given you an earful. I should stop and see if you have some follow up. Yeah, questions. no, that's it's it's quite a lot. And of course, um, I, I don't think you explicitly mentioned the uh, the Family Network also uh, held a Stop Asian Hate rally in front of the high school uh, in the days following the Atlanta shooting, I think, to really drive home that Yes, there was a horrific tragedy in Atlanta, but it reverberated throughout, including in our community. And so that was another example of something that BAAFN has done. What about um, internally, um, you know, support for um, new or, or longtime Asian families or support uh, for students in the schools? Is there also um, a more internal component or is it just these sort of public events? So certainly we, our mission statement is um, that we were formed to support the needs of Asian and Asian American family, students and their families in the Brookline school. So that that is core to our mission. And the way we do that is, is around advocacy, um, around the needs um, of the overall community. So, you know, as I mentioned, one of the, the big pushes we have is to um, increase the number of Asian American teachers and staff in the schools. And the way we've done that is, you know, talking to the superintendent, talking to the um, high school principal, but also, um, you know, for example, last year, there, because of some of the budgetary issues that were caused by COVID. Um, there was a big issue with, with layoffs. And then um, three kindergarten teachers of color were bumped um, because they didn't have professional status and they were bumped by teachers who did and had to move because of cuts. And so we, we try, you know, we organized a petition and a lot of um, activism around trying to preserve those teachers' jobs. And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, unfortunately we did lose one of those teachers, but two stayed within the system. Um, you know, another way we try to support Asian American students and their families is just to have a place to share information and concerns. Um, we have a listserv and I think we have close to 500 people on the listserv right now. Um, and if uh, any of the viewers would like to join the listserv for Baffin, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take an example and a page from your book. And this is the email address. 
for, for Baff and did I do this wrong? Is it, is it no, that's right. it's, B, it's B A A F N one at Gmail. Yeah. So it's baffin one at gmail.com. Um, I guess I should have written that backwards so that the camera. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we see it correctly. We see okay. it correctly. All right. All uh, right. You see the mirror image for yourself, but we see it correctly. Okay. So email that uh, address if you want to join the listserv. We also have a Facebook page. So just look up Baffin on Facebook. And, you know, it's a place for people to, to share issues and concerns. Um, the other day we had a really nice exchange of emails of uh, some community members who wanted to book recommendations about the Asian American experience. We also have a, a, a website. Um, and uh, I didn't write that one down. Sorry, I should have thought that one. But it's, it's just look up Google Baffin. Um, we have a website and there's a ton of resources. Um, our, our web masters, Linda Louie, and she has put a bunch of stuff on that. Um, uh, and we, you know, we, um, we have one off events uh, sometimes to support the Asian American community. So we've had events about um, the mental health needs of Asian American students, which is a, an issue that just always needs more attention because there's you know, such a stigma around mental health needs um, in the Asian American community. Um, and we really need to do more to support the mental health needs uh, of our students, especially after this year of COVID-19. It's, it's been a very terrible year for the students generally and for Asian American students. And so what should we expect coming up? Do you have any big plans, any one-off events coming up or should we just you know, hold, hold the line and wait for February uh, for the Lunar New Year? Uh, so we, we don't have any events coming up until the Lunar New Year. Uh, one of the things that viewers can do though is that I forgot to mention the display boards. So my steering committee, fellow steering committee member, Alicia Shu, who's been doing most of the work, I can't claim credit. She's been doing most of the work dealing with curriculum uh, and, and advocacy in the schools. And she organized parents in each of the elementary schools to create these wonderful display boards, these very, very large, I have to stretch my hand out like this. I think they're, they're like four by six feet display boards of prominent Asian Americans, both nationally and locally, and each of the schools had one. And then after May, after AAPI Heritage Month, she, um, we, she and the Office of Diversity, Inclusion and Community Relations and the ever wonderful Caitlin Starr, who supports so many of these activities around town, um, got them placed different, different um, areas in town. So there's uh, one in town hall, there's one in the public health building, there's one in the College Corner Theater. Um, and so folks can look those up and take a look at them in person. They're just really wonderful to see. Um, and Remote Learning Ca uh, Academy had a, a virtual one and, and there's a link to that on our website. Well, as I said, you, you wear many hats in addition to your, your professional activities and your Baffin activities. Um, more recently, you've become a volunteer on several boards, committees, commissions, and so forth. Um, Reimagining policing, advisory committee, town meeting. Um, that's, a, that's a lot to bite off. Tell us about um, sort of how you decided to start spending more time um, directly working on local government issues and not just community issues and uh, how you landed where you did. So that's correct. I have started getting more involved in town issues and uh, I blame uh, select board member Dr. Ralph Fernandez who dragged me onto the Task Force for Reimagining Policing. It, it's been a wonderful experience um, really working with him and the other task force members. They're, they're all really incredible, smart people. Um, and uh, it was just very, um, we, you know, we've um, 
it, it, we've had a lot of think, you know, reimagining and a lot of work. We put together a fantastic report um, and it's led to real changes. For example, um, just last week, the select board voted uh, to take the uh, um, school resource officers out of the schools, the walk and talk unit. Um, where we are entering into the town is entering into a consulting contract with this organization called Cahoots um, in, from from Eugene, Oregon, to figure out a better way to do social services and crisis response than sending armed police officers in. So, um, you know, seeing you know, I do federal advocacy, and federal advocacy often takes years and years and years and it's very frustrating because you spend all this time putting together reports and meetings and media and you see you take just take year take years and so it was really really gratifying to work on something and then see changes made really quickly and and, and that i guess is the advantage of working on the local level um we we were able to you know implement some of the reimagining right away. Um, and so that was gratifying. And um, working with the, you know, the town of Brookline is just full of incredibly smart, thoughtful, hardworking folks willing to volunteer lots of time to the town. And so um, as because of that experience, I was asked to join advisory committee. And uh, when I joined advisory, um, I thought, well, I might as well see about joining town meeting. So now I'm on town meeting. Um, it's a lot of work. Um, I have to say that uh, the town, this town runs on and benefits from so much volunteer time. I mean, the amount of time people put in, it's pretty incredible. Um, but, it, you know, it is very gratifying to do it. And, you know, I have to say um, part of it was just you know, getting an entree and being asked and then getting to know the folks who are active. Um, be, being virtual did help. I mean, I, I have to say um, things like advisory committee take up a lot of time. And so it helped that we were on Zoom um, because it's two days a week, uh, two evenings a week. And uh, so um, it, it is Funny though, you know, being with folks on Zoom all the time and then seeing them in person, maybe at a rally or an event or the, this past Juneteenth Mar March, and going, "Oh my God, you exist as flesh and blood." And and sometimes at a different height than perhaps you expected, right? I've had that where it's like, "Wait, you're six four? I had no idea." Or <laughs> you're five foot four? You know, like. Um, yeah, so so we're certainly getting getting used to all of that, uh, and and so you know town meeting is is quite a bit of work, uh, really throughout the year with a maybe a little bit of break in the summer and a little bit of break, December January, uh, town meeting sort of ramps up and then it's it's sort of you know all hands on deck, uh, for some number of days. Was this was this your first town meeting um, this this May? Yeah, it was my first town meeting. I. Um, it was the first time I attended a town meeting. It was uh, interesting. Um, it was, you know, obviously the Zoom format different than in-person town meetings. So I have yet to experience one of those. Um, it's interesting to see the, the different array of viewpoints in town. Um, you know, Brookline has a reputation of being a progressive town. And certainly there are a lot of folks who are progressive and there are a lot of folks who, but there are a lot of different political viewpoints too. Where it's, it's not a monolithic town. And um, do you feel like it wasn't long enough? You feel like it needs another <laughs> couple of nights? Um, I think when Kate Poverman sent out a message that we would be meeting like every day for two weeks so that we would make that June 15th deadline. I was like, what, what? Um, it was intense. It, um, and, you know, I, there were some complaints, obviously. I think, I think, you know, there are more warrant articles, I think being, being filed and there are different perspectives that are being vocal. 
Um, and that takes time. And you have 240 people, even if a fraction of them want to say their piece, that's going to be a lot of time. Um, and so, you know, we do have to think about, is this sustainable? It, um, is this level of volunteerism and, and all these resources, uh, is it going to be sustainable in the long term? And that's certainly a conversation that's happening in, in town. Um, somebody pointed out we, there are 17 state capitals that have smaller populations than Brookline. Yeah, I don't know if that's, I mean, that's sort of a strange and, and not necessarily helpful statistic. Um, I think that, um, look, like it was, an eight, so for the folks who don't know, it was an eight night town meeting, which was very much on the long side. Oh, yeah, I guess. But, <laughs> but we debated war in Article 18 for one night and then another two nights after that. So if we hadn't done that, that gets you down to six, right? Which is a lot less than eight. Uh, I think that uh, virtual town meetings run more slowly than in-person town meetings for the same topic. And so my instinct is that the town meeting that we had, that was eight nights, right? If we were in person, I don't think that, um, you know, maybe reconsideration doesn't happen. Um, and then I think you shave off another two nights just in terms of the inefficiencies of, can you hear me now? Is my Zoom on? Uh, I can't take it off mute. Uh, and then the voting, like remember in person voting, um, show of hands takes four seconds, but in Zoom it takes 40 seconds times every single time we have a motion. So I don't know. I think that when we get back to in person, it will move a little bit more quickly um, than it does online. but we'll see you know it's one of the things we'll find out i think sooner or later and i'm not sure which it will be um but uh any um any other reactions about town meeting any sort of any surprises was there anything about it that you didn't expect that either you thought was terrible or that you know you were, you found inspiring um i i i would say it is inspiring to see so many people active. Um, on the other hand, I could see there were some folks who, who, I mean, this one didn't happen during town meeting, it happened on the infamous listserv, but that there were some folks who um, had been around and weren't happy that there were all these young new whippersnappers coming in and, you know, expressing their viewpoints, which was kind of funny because a lot of us who are, are new, but we're, we're actually not all that young. Um, it was just, we hadn't been active before. And so, you know, if more people are active, we're gonna get more different viewpoints too. Yeah. That's right. And, and you know, I think that um, while uh, longer town meetings uh, can grind and, and it's hard because we have other responsibilities at the same time, I think both there's some sort of catharsis to the town sort of airing its grievances, right? Saying out loud things that are worth it, but also hearing from more viewpoints um, allows us a better chance to at least starting to understand folks who have a different experience in the same town and possibly even making better decisions. But, you know, I, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a fan of town meeting. I always have been, uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I certainly miss the cookies. Um, in person, we get cookies and coffee. Uh, at home, you have to provide your own. Um, so, do you have any? So, so the the reimagining uh, committee is is wrapped up, or do you still have more work to do? The reimagining task force has concluded its work, so that is now over. Which um, not only is gratifying in terms of achieving results, but also because it was Friday mornings at 8 a.m. So I am glad we no longer have Friday. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> and so are you shopping for a new uh, committee to spend some time on, or you think you're going to just be satisfied with advisory and town meeting and bath in and advocating for consumers nationwide, you know, and being a mom? So uh, I am not shopping for another another uh, committee, um, how, um, you know, advisory is, is a, and town meeting is a full plate and then doing, doing Baffin and, you know, having a day job too. Um, I, but 
you know, I, I would encourage other Asian Americans if any of them are watching this to also get active because the other thing that struck me is there's only a handful of us in town meeting. Um, uh, you know, 240 town meeting members, um, you know, we are, we are one in six residents and we certainly were not one in, you know, there were not 40 Asian Americans, I think maybe four or five at most. So we, we, we're definitely underrepresented in all the levers of power in town. Yeah, no, no question about that. You know, town meeting actually like it's diversity on gender is spot on. The percentage of African-American town meeting members is almost exactly spot on town. Uh, but no question, Asians are dramatically underrepresented. Part of the story is um, the number of Asians who are not US citizens and therefore ineligible to vote or to serve on town meeting as a percentage is higher than other ethnic groups, but that's nowhere near the whole story, right? There's tremendous room uh, for uh, more participation. Uh, and, and that means finding candidates and that means electing them and that means welcoming them and mentoring them, right? There's a lot of steps there. Uh, I have no doubt that uh, you uh, will inspire others, starting with the millions of people watching this television show. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Uh, you know, here on Brookline Interactive, which is which is where we are and, and where we'll end. Uh, we've, we've, we're out of time. Uh, Chi Chi Wu, uh, a woman who wears many hats in town. Uh, and, and, and we're glad you do because your work is so important. Thanks for coming on Brookline Interactive Group today. And uh, I look forward to getting a cup of coffee with you again soon. Thanks, Tommy, for having me and look forward to that coffee and maybe a cookie with it. That sounds great. We'll see you soon.